Good morning and welcome once more to Morning Prayer. Today is Monday the 22nd of November. Today we'll be reading Psalms 129, 130 and 131. We'll also be reading Joel chapter 3 verses 9 to 17 and then 1 Peter 1 chapter 1 verses 1 to 12. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Amen. We have come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We say together, a shout to the Lord in triumph. A shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Come into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and bless His holy name. For the Lord is good, His loving mercy is forever, His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn now to our Psalms, which are Psalms 129, 130 and 131. Many a time from my youth upward, have they fought against me? Now may Israel say, Many a time from my youth upward have they fought against me, but they have not prevailed. They have scored my back as with a plowshare, they have opened long furrows. But the Lord is righteous, and he has cut me free from the thongs of the wicked. They shall be confounded and turned backward, all those who hate Zion. They shall be as the grass that grows up on the housetops which withers before it comes to any good, with which no reaper may fill his hand, nor the binder of sheaves his bosom. And none who pass by shall say to them, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, should note what we do wrong, who then, O Lord, could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and in his word is my hope. My soul looks for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, more, I say, than watchman for the morning. O Israel, trust in the Lord, for the Lord, with the Lord there is mercy and with him is ample redemption. He will redeem Israel from the multitude of his sins. O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I do not busy myself with great matters or in things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child upon its mother's breast. Like a child on its mother's breast is my soul within me. O Israel, Trust in the Lord from this time forward and forever. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from Joel, and we're reading chapter 3, verse 9 to 17. Proclaim this among the nations, prepare for war, rouse the warriors, let all the fighty men draw near and attack. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weakling say, I am strong. Come quickly all your nations from every side and assemble there. Bring down your warriors, our Lord. Let the nations be roused. Let them advance into the valley of Jezebeth. For there I will sit to judge all the nations on every side. Swing the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come, trample the grapes in the winepress. It's full and the vats overflow. So great is their wickedness. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will be darkened and the stars no longer shine. The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the sky will tremble, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people, the stronghold for the people of Israel. Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion, my holy hill. Jerusalem will be holy. Never again will foreigners invade her. Yeah, in our first lesson. We say now the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of our servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people for knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading now is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1. 3 to 12. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadonia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ, and sprinkling by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him 
and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith and of your soul. Concerning the salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently with all the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look in these things. Yeah, in our second lesson. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the basis, the bedrock of our faith, the bedrock of our church, of our religion. If Christ didn't rise from the dead, what would there be to believe in? He would have just been another good prophet walking around doing great things like Elijah did or Elisha or Isaiah the prophet who predicted the coming of Christ and the suffering of Christ. If Jesus wasn't raised from the dead we would have nothing to believe in. Peter also mentions that while we are waiting for this hope of eternal life that has been revealed to us through the resurrection of Christ, we will be suffering many trials and many griefs. We will have a lot of things coming into our lives that are difficult and unpleasant and, and hurtful. And it's those things that can either destroy us or strengthen us. We can look at those things and we can take them and we can say, God doesn't exist. He doesn't love us. He's got nothing to do with us. There is no God. Or we can take those things and we can say, I believe that God will give me the strength to get through this. We can ask God for his help in getting through any difficulty. In one of the Psalms it says, What can man do to me? I have trust in God. What can man do to me? And that is the thing that will strengthen our faith. That is the thing that will prepare our souls for eternity. Unfortunately, we live in this world where everything is sight and hearing and smell and touch and taste and those are the senses that we develop and the senses that we rely on. Everything is physical and we start to believe that we are just physical beings that happen to have a spirit as opposed to believing that we are ultimately a spirit that just happens to have a mortal body that won't last too long. And I just pray today that we will all come to that realization that whatever difficulties we're facing, faith in Christ, the power and the love of God, the forgiveness of sin are the things that pull us through, the things that we can lean on and rely on and, and, and count on as we try and step forward and improve our relationship with God. And I just pray that today all of us will draw closer to Christ, that we will come to understand his love, that we will understand the suffering that he went through for us. The reason why he went through all of that 
was to enlighten and to help us individually, not collectively. Amen. We say together now the song of the church. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. Your true and only Son, worthy of worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man, to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, or to the price of your own blood. And bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you, we praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. Say now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, <coughs> the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace, and let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Our colleague for today. Most High God, Majestic and mighty, our beginning and our end. Rule in our hearts and guide us to be faithful, worshiping the one who comes as a saviour and a sovereign, and who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and the lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we praise you for the blessings brought to humankind through Christ. We bless you for the grace of the sacraments for our fellowship in Christ with you and with one another, for the teaching of the scriptures and for the preaching of your word, 
We thank you for the holy example of your saints, for your faithful servants departed this life, and for the memory and example of all that has been true and good in their lives. Number us with them in the company of the redeemed in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and eternal Father, everlasting Father, you have safely brought us to the beginning of another day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we might be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger, and enable us this day to do only what is right in your eyes, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. I wish you a pleasant day and I will see you again this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Amen.